three months ago this channel exclusively leaked the correct pricing for Zen 5 and that Zen 5 X3D will be capable of notably higher clocks than Zen 4 X3D in addition to receiving full overclocking support. And if you look around, pretty much everyone has since reported on all of this as a fact, backing up this leak that was way ahead of the curb. But you know, that wasn't all that was in that leak. There was also an insistence by at least one of my sources that Zen 5 x 3 would launch in some form this year. And now I can tell you 100% that this is happening because I have pictures to prove it. And I want to put them on screen right now. So if you look on screen, you can see some marketing material AMD is now providing to its partners for an imminent launch of the 9800X3D with the tagline, The Legend, which obviously references the legendary X3D models they've been selling for a while, and that it is unbeatable. And also, as you can see, this is your first look, too, at the coloring of the 9000 series X3D boxes, which is technically new shading there, but that's not all. I also have access to some official documentation with a few details in there, but I'm not sure that it's entirely safe for me to show full documents because I do know that these companies can change wording here and there and track like who had this file when. It's a little different than a picture, which I, of course, pixel shifted and changed the coloring of slightly so that it wouldn't give away sources. So I'm not going to show you the full documentation on how uh, X3D 9000 products are to be marketed, but I am going to put this leak slide on screen that condenses down the things that I flagged as being notable. Like, for example, point number one here, the 900X3D in documentation is listed as a 2024 product by being on a 2024 product page, and there are no 9950X3D or 9900X3D products listed on that page, suggesting, yeah, this is probably the only X3D product launching this year. Additionally, the 9800X3D is referenced as having 104 megabytes of cache multiple times, which really isn't new information. It's just now we 100% know they're not changing that. And then also it is references being designed for increased frequencies. Again, just nipping that in the butt, this thing will be clocked notably faster than Zen 4. It's now official in my books. And multiple times terms like the best and ultimate processors for elite gaming, you know, stuff like where AMD isn't going, like if if AMD was launching more than the 9800X3D, like a 9950X3D that costs more, I can almost promise you that they would talk about the 9800X3D like the perfect choice for elite gamers or the best choice for gaming or perfect for high-end gaming. They wouldn't use terms like ultimate or the best overall because that suggests that there's nothing that will be stronger and the 9950X3D will probably be slightly better at gaming, uh, at least on paper it should be. And so, yeah, again, this is another thing that to me suggests it is just the 9800X3D uh, that is launching this year uh, for Zen 5 X3D products. Uh, now, finally, other things that are worth mentioning, there's marketing uh, deals mentioned with Call of Duty Black Ops 6, so expect something around that. And then also, and this one is very important in my opinion, RX 7000 graphics are mentioned as being the perfect bundle with Zen 5 X3D. There was no mention of RX 8000 series graphics, just 7000 over and over. And yeah, that unfortunately does inform me that it is unlikely RDNA 4 is launching this year. And so there you go. The 9800X3D is therefore definitely launching this year. AMD does expect it to firmly hold the gaming crown due to its increased frequencies, but the rest of the lineup is not ready for this year, which I actually don't think is that big of a deal. I think the 9800X3D is really what people want. I mean, if you look at Amazon bestsellers, it is almost always the six and the eight core products that are making the market share gains for AMD. Although, actually, if you look, the 7800X3D isn't selling that well anymore, and it's, of course, because its price is going up. I believe because volume is going down because AMD is probably starting to wind down production of Zen 4 8-core X3D products to make room for Zen 5 X3D products to fully replace them. Just like actually this channel exclusively leaked that the 5800 X3D is halting production to make room for the 7600 X3D and then just the cheapest 5700 X3D being the main gaming processor for AM4. And again, yes, unfortunately, it does seem like RDNA 4 is unlikely to launch 
this year. And it's actually, I, I'm not just telling you that because I see suggestions that it's not coming out on that 9800X3D uh, marketing documentation. No, before I received that documentation in the middle of this week, I actually had two other sources warning me that RDNA 4 was getting pushed back to 2025. And that was intended by me to be the lead story until I received that documentation. So I actually have much, much more to say about RDNA 4 being delayed because uh, I know why it is being delayed. And I also have a brief update for RTX 5000 series graphics cards as well. But first, an ad from a sponsor. All Jesse wants is for Maurice to play with her more often. But unfortunately, he just does not give out playtime or kisses for as low of a rate as she does. And I think she's just going to have to deal with that. But do you know what you don't have to deal with? Paying too much for Microsoft software if you go to cdkeyoffer.com. This piece of content is sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com and their back to school sale. Whether it's Microsoft operating systems, office products, or even many of the latest games, cdkeyoffer.com provides PC gamers with a product this community deserves amongst endlessly elevating component costs, Fair pricing on Microsoft keys is one thing that we at least should get, I think. And you know, the Moore's Law's Dead team has been working with CDKeyOffer.com for a very long time. And that's because they're good to me, good to Dan, good to about a dozen family members of friends of mine that have used their services. And they've been really, really good, most importantly, to the Moore's Law is Dead community. So support this channel by using offer code BROKENSILICON to save 25% off Microsoft software or you can also use Die Shrink to save 3% off everything else on the website like games. Using either of those codes really helps the channel a ton and it helps save you money. So use those codes Broken Silicon and Die Shrink at cdkeyoffer.com today. All right, so like I said earlier in this video, it wasn't just clues on 9800X3D documentation that clued me in that RDNA 4 was being delayed to 2025. No, I had received warnings from other sources earlier in the week as well that I was already compiling to make a report on RDNA 4 status already. And let me put those on screen for you now because the story that is painted is interesting. So this first source here tells me that they are sorry they have to tell me this, that things have changed, but they did just get an email from AMD stating that RDNA 4 is almost certainly getting pushed back to quarter one of 2025. The reason stated is that they need to get rid of Navi 31 stock before RDNA 4 launches because, well, they have a massive RDNA 3 oversupply problem right now. And well, I suspect, right, if they were to price drop Navi 32, like the 7800 XT to $400, the 7700 XT to like $350 or $330, that they could kind of get by selling those at cost and they would sell through below top RDNA 4. But I'm sorry, from what I hear, the 8800 XT is just a better choice than the 7900 XT and the 7900 XTX. Costs far less to make, uses less energy, better ray tracing. It'll be able to better accelerate with hardware, FSR 4, if not just be able to do it in RDNA 3. Can't do it at all once this thing is out and cheaper than RDNA 3, or should I say top RDNA 3. There's really no reason to buy that unless it's cheaper. And price dropping products, you know, the 7900 XT, the 7900 XTX that were really meant to be sold between $700 and $1,000, you'd have to what? Drop them to like $500, $550, maybe $600? And, and they just aren't going to make margin on that. And so, yeah, that's a major reason given for why they're delaying RDNA 4. Now, if I put these quotes back on screen, this was backed up by a major retailer source of mine that said that they can confirm they have a huge RDNA 3 oversupply problem right now. Actually, though, low to mid-range RDNA 3 is selling just fine, but Navi 31 isn't moving at all right now. And again, it's not a surprise to me. I think that you don't need any sources, right? You don't need any contacts in the industry to be somebody who goes, huh, RDNA 2 launched 2020. Huh, RDNA 3 launched 2022. Huh, RDNA 4 will probably launch around two years after RDNA 3. Don't need any sources to know that. And I, I think AMD is just going to have to come to terms with that, that people know. And video as well. People know this is coming out. Like, you can try to trick people into thinking it won't, but at the latest, it's coming quarter one. I just don't see why someone would want to buy a $1,000 graphics card when they know something at least close to that could be launching for around half the price in a matter of months. But anyways... Continuing with source number three here, this person who is actually at AMD 
told me, kind of I told you so, that they had always communicated that by quarter one, 2025, is all that can be guaranteed for RDNA 4, that they could have seen it launching earlier, but that's all that they would promise, but actually that they could also corroborate that partners of AMD were briefed about RDNA 4 a month ago, backing up that, yeah, maybe some of those reps were under the impression that this thing was launching by the end of the year, even if, if you were all the way up at the top of AMD management, Maybe they weren't so sure about that. Now, moving on to the final source here. Uh, this person who's an AIB told me that they believe there is no way they could potentially launch RDNA 4 in October, that it's too late, that, well, they have information on it, that the necessary other things for supply chains just isn't ready yet, but they could actually maybe see a paper launch by the end of this year that they wouldn't bet on it. And so, yeah, there you go. I think there is a narrow chance we could see some paper launch, certainly a teaser for RDNA 4 before the end of the year, but I don't think we should be betting on it launching by the end of the year anymore. And honestly, what I believe has happened here is, and I unfortunately can't give you all of the details about this because then you might know exactly which team said what to who. But uh, my understanding is that the drivers for RDNA 4 are pretty much done. Actually, I've been told they've been done for months. And also that designs are locked in, specs have been communicated to AIBs, they've, AIBs are being have been briefed and like everything's basically set up for a 2024 launch. And so because of that, I am under the impression that some AMD teams and some AMD reps that were talking to partners saw all of this, the done drivers, the done specs, like they know if it's going to be sold on AMD's website or not, which I leaked that it won't be. And they're like, yeah, obviously this is launching this year. And when they were asked in meetings with their partners, they said, oh yeah, this should launch this year when technically they were never told by upper management that they were going to do that. And they weren't talking to any of the bean counters, which if they were, they would probably have known, oh, there's no way we can do this yet because we're going to go bankrupt if we have all this oversupply RDNA 3 there. Well, not bankrupt, but, you know, figure of speech, it'd be a loss that they don't want to eat. And also, I want to be clear about another thing here. That first source there that I showed you that was sorry to report this to me, that was one of the people that helped get me access to the 9800X3D documentation, which clearly is not fake and was behind many of my best leaks, like the 4080 Super Pricing. And, well, I can't list all of them or, you know, you would be able to pretty easily tell who this person is, maybe where this person works, whatever. But I can say that, like, if you think that the RDNA 4 info I had was made up, then tell me you think that 9800X3D documentation I just showed you was made up. Because it isn't. It's just the fact of the matter is sometimes people at AMD don't have all the information or sometimes things change. Like perhaps AMD thought Navi 31 might have a chance of selling way better in quarter three than it has ended up selling. And yeah, on that note, I'm curious what AMD's quarter three gaming revenue is going to look like because I'm not expecting good things after getting this information. But uh, anyways, moving on from AMD now to NVIDIA here. I do have a brief update on the RTX 5000 series before I let you go. Now, I won't be showing any quotes on screen for this one because I was specifically asked by my NVIDIA sources on this one not to directly quote them, but I was told I could communicate the gist of what's going on, that that would be safe. And so here it is. Yeah, it does sound like to me there is some sort of RTX 5080 and 5090 launch, at least effectively a paper launch happening by the very end of this year. That is the impression I get. But it is... It's, it's, it's like a most likely thing because NVIDIA is holding this very close to their chest right now. Like that is something I was told, like the upper management and marketing people are being way more tight-lipped than usual, even for NVIDIA about this. And, and also that uh, people are scared to talk about uh, stuff to me at NVIDIA right now. Uh, apparently, recent leaks that have come out about the 5080 and the 5090 have really made upper management at NVIDIA mad. No joke. I was specifically told that in an internal communication, upper management people were freaking out and just saying they were literally pissed when they saw this article you're seeing here next to me come out. Uh, and they have terrified <laughs> my sources at NVIDIA from saying anything specifically to me right now besides being willing to corroborate that people are really mad at NVIDIA that some of these recent leaks have come out. So... At a minimum, then, what that tells me is, I don't know if everything in that leak is correct. I, I'm not going to lie. I don't know for sure. But I would suggest that probably something in that article, at least, is correct, if not all of it. And at a minimum, maybe also, or there could be a situation where something is in there that they think hurts their ability to compete, whether it's true or not. But the fact of the matter is that if they're getting this mad about RTX 5000 series leaks... 
that tells me this thing is probably coming out by the end of the year, or I don't know really why uh, they would care that much. Uh, because right now, I already know that RTX 4090 supply is dwindling due to GDDR6X uh, supply constraints. That's actually why the 4070 GDDR6 non-X exists is because they're running out of that. And that is different supply than GDDR7, which I don't think they'll be competing with other people for GDDR7 for a while because RDNA4 uses GDDR6. All of what I'm saying is it would make a lot of sense for them to want to launch the 5090 at the end of this year if they're having trouble supplying enough 4090s. And my suspicion is, is that they're just really mad that the cat's starting to come out of the bag right now because there's probably still a lot of other RTX 4000 series cards that they do want to make sure are gone by the time they launch it. But anyways, that's just me reading between the lines. I thought you guys would find all of that interesting. And that's going to do it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to the YouTube channel, Moore's Law is Dead. And then also, please make sure to check out the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. The best way to support Moore's Law is Dead is to go on that Patreon. You can ask us questions at the lowest tier. Hardware Unbox should this time be coming on for next week. Actually, after, I believe, reviewing some pretty interesting stuff. So we have a lot to talk about. If you want to ask Steve from Hardware Unbox questions, join the Patreon. Even at the lowest tier, you can do so, and you'll get access to the Discord, access to a catalog of hundreds of bonuses of pieces of content called Die Shrink. One just came out as well. There's never any ads in it. And uh, yeah, we just can't do this without our patrons. But uh, no matter what, if you made it this far in the video, as always, thank you for watching.